Hi, welcome to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Summit Life Ministries. My name is Carmen Furrow. This is Lynn Furrow, founder of Summit Life Ministries, and my husband. The mission of Summit Life Ministries is to elevate, equip, and empower. Elevate the church's vision to see our identity through God's eternal purpose. Equip believers to live with an eternal perspective. And elevate, oh, sorry, empower believers to live supernatural lifestyles in faith-filled obedience. We are practicing these mission statements daily. And in our Age Changer show, um, this week we've been looking at the Ascension life and what that means and how Jesus' life and our shared interaction, uh, what does that mean for us as we live this life? Yes. You know, these are great, powerful truths of where Jesus has gone before us and the reality of them. Mm -hmm. But now what we want to say is, how can I take the truth of these things and begin to apply them mm -hmm. where they begin to be worked out in my life, where I'm, I'm starting to experience and realize uh, the reality of what he's experiencing, but because I'm in union with him, there is this working in me as well mm -hmm. to begin to have breakthrough into dimensions of the life that he is living now. And I call that Ascension Life. Uh, Paul talked about, in yesterday's episode, we went through Philippians 3, uh, 12 and 13 and 14, where it talks about, uh, Paul said, even though, you know, I've known him in dimensions of the power of his resurrection and uh, I've interact with Jesus and in fellowship and acquainting with mm -hmm. his sufferings, but he said, just because I, I had some level of revelation and experiential understanding of those truths, it, I'm not perfect and, and I'm still growing. And, and just as he has completely apprehended me, I want to completely apprehend Christ in the way that he has fully laid hold of me. So he said, one thing I do, he goes, I am going to forget what's behind and we just use that example of a sports analogy where mm -hmm. players that make mistakes you've got to you got to forget about it mm -hmm. but the actual analogy that Paul was using in Philippians 3 is of a runner who is so close to the finish line that he can smell it i mean he is going to win the race but there are others that are coming up behind and it's going to be a photo finish. It's going to be down to what we call the wire. And what he does is he wants to make sure he's not going to lose his lead. And so what he does is he glances back just for a moment as the other one leans in and, and cuts across the, the, the tape before he does. What a, what, a, what a moment in the mm -hmm. last moments, a moment of failure in the last moments of a race. I've watched these things happen where athletes are so close in their competitive uh, edge uh, with each other that there, there are photo finishes. And just one mistake mm -hmm. um, you know, cost them a gold medal or a silver medal mm -hmm. because, again, they're, they're worried about who's creeping up behind them, and they take their eyes off the prize. Mm -hmm. the, the lesson of what Paul is communicating in Philippians 3 is don't take your eye off the prize. Mm -hmm. There is a high calling of God in Christ Jesus, a calling to be with him where he is in the highest realm in heaven and to experience ascension life, what it means to reign in grace, what it means to be given the kingdom and, and your closest mm -hmm. living family member has been given, uh, you know, exactly. the wealth of the universe. And, and sometimes we don't use that type of natural language to right. describe spiritual realities. But we need, to, we need to realize that my closest relative, mm -hmm. my strongest relative, mm -hmm. I mean, they're my closest, but also the most powerful mm -hmm. relative rules the universe has an empire and you are a part of that royal family 
that should change the way I think. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do in Summit Life Ministries is we want to elevate and equip people and empower people to where you just don't spend your earthly life and your goal is how can I get a nice retirement to where I can fish more. And I'm not opposed to fishing. I love to fish. I am an outdoorsman. I love the outdoors. But it, it's not about how can I have a comfortable retirement and live out the American dream. Yeah. How, how is it that I can buy the mo most toys with the money that I make? And if you buy into that, it's not that, you know, the, the root of that is some sinister evil plan, uh, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not just a knowledge of evil. Mm -hmm. It was the knowledge of good and evil. And, and there are many good things out there, but they do not originate from God in, in that it produces life. There are many good things that you think, this is good. This, this will add a, an aspect and a dimension to my life that will bring fulfillment. How many people have chased trivial pursuits all their life and they end up at the end of their life going, I ended up wasting most mm -hmm. of, of my life pursuing that which was a trivial pursuit. I, I wanted to just, I was just thinking where, where God likes to add those things to us as an overflow blessing, but it, he clearly said, seek first the kingdom. You're Absolutely. not seeking those things, you're seeking the kingdom. And then he takes care of those things so they don't have to be your focus or what you're seeking. He is, and He blesses you with those things That's so right. that you can enjoy them because they are, they are things that are good for us to enjoy. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything He created was for man's enjoyment. Uh, but if we're not careful, we can end up worshiping the creation mm -hmm. rather than the Creator. Mm -hmm. and so many people get distracted. And, and, and so uh, I, I've, I've heard uh, brothers put it this way. He goes, we, we cannot allow ourselves to be captivated by the inferior pleasures yeah. of sin. And sometimes it's not just sinful pleasures. Right. There are pleasures that are just inferior because they're temporal. Mm -hmm. We've got to be captivated by the superior pleasure of the enjoyment and the love of God. And so if I know I'm a son of God and I know that you're a daughter of God and that God is training us to reign and and that we're spiritual royalty okay. and and that we are out right now to be reigning by a grace by an ability a, a power that's been given us to live a god kind of life i have to elevate my vision to where i'm not just mm -hmm. you know being earthly and earthbound i need to have my vision focused upon heavenly things where christ is seated my affections be directed towards there, mm -hmm. uh, not on some inferior pleasure, but my affections are, are, are directed to where uh, Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And then I have this, this uh, walk of faith to experience more of what is there instead of me just saying, I'm going to try to find greater resourcing down here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, Elevate, equip. God is trying to equip us to, to, to live with that perspective so that we live in a supernatural God kind of life. But my point is that there, there are some grace teachers that just go, you got it. Just rest in it. It'll come to you. I have found that when the children of Israel went into their promised land, their warfare went from um, occasional to continual. Mm -hmm. There was a contesting for every inch of the promised land mm -hmm. because by faith, that, that's a part mm -hmm. of the development to become mature sons, mm -hmm. is, is the issue of our obedience to yield to the Lord and to become more heavenly than earthly. There is always this battle of the will and battle over uh, mindsets and mentalities that we had, whether we're going to allow fear or faith to control us, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're going to allow cave in uh, 
to, to fear that would try to hold us into bondage or whether we're going to have an unwavering, courageous faith that, that sets us free from the law of sin that holds us bound to earthly things and we're able to ascend into realms of life that we've never known. I want to apprehend the one mm -hmm. who has apprehended me. I want to fully grow and develop. So we are, we are resting because his work is finished. But I use this example. Many times when we describe a king or a queen or a monarch in their reign, uh, for example, we have the most known monarch and queen uh, that, that everybody or pretty much everybody should be aware of is Queen Elizabeth. She's been a long reigning queen of England uh, and so pretty familiar with the House of Windsor. And so we say that Queen Elizabeth has set upon the throne of England or of Great Britain for decades. Mm -hmm. Does that mean, when I use that turn of phrase, does that mean that Elizabeth, Queen of England, Queen of Great Britain, that she spent decades sitting in a chair? No. No. It just means that that chair that she does sit on is a unique chair, and that's called a throne. <laughs> and that throne represents a place of authority, a place that she ascended to, and she was given a crown, which again is a representation of her rule and her yeah. reign. Nobody else sits on her throne. And nobody else she sits does. in that chair, <laughs> and and nobody says, I, I get to borrow this for a while. No, she has reigned mm -hmm. on the throne of England for decades. However, we know that, that at one period of time, and she's getting quite old and, and older now, but when uh, she began her reign and all throughout her reign, she was a very active queen, and she would visit uh, the Commonwealth of Great Britain. She would go to Australia, New Zealand. She would visit African countries, wherever the British Empire had mm -hmm. spread, wherever there was the Commonwealth. She was going to other countries. She was jet-setting or in her royal yacht going to all manner of places throughout the world. Was she still seated on the throne? She's still yeah, she queen. was. We would still say that the Queen of England was uh, reigning on her throne, mm -hmm. but yet she was active. We need to understand that our spiritual uh, seat is with Christ, but yet just as Jesus is active right now mm -hmm. in advancing his kingdom. Right. I believe he is commanding his angels. I believe that he, he, he is traversing realms mm -hmm. of his kingdom. I believe that he is engaged in revealing himself to his subjects yes. all over the world and in heavenly realms. Jesus is a very active and energetic mm -hmm. ruler. Well, those that are his regents, that are carrying out his commands, both uh, angelic representatives, but also those of us that are ambassadors of the kingdom, we're also active, and we should be spiritually energetic mm -hmm. uh, in carrying out uh, our call, not only as his family, but his, his family that have been made regents that represent represent his kingdom. Now I want to look quickly at this passage of scripture to show you that again it's not a contradiction, it's just a truth that has two two sides. The reason why I'm able to be active and energetic interjective energetic in kingdom activity and and walking in kingdom obedience, growing and developing in the kingdom, knowing what it is to be a a uh, son that is maturing and growing and being given greater responsibility in the kingdom is because of what he is working in me, what he has resourced me with. And where are we reading? And so Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, he said this, he said, Therefore, my beloved, 
as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. So mm -hmm. Paul was commending the Philippian church saying, you guys have always been an active, energetic mm -hmm. church that has lived out their faith in obedience to the will of God. Because I've given you apostolic instruction. I've taught you the ways of God. And in my presence, I watched you, how you received the word and put faith into actions and, and you obeyed the Lord. But he said, I'm getting the report that you guys are obeying at levels that you're engaged in now that, that surpassed your obedience when I was even present among you. But then he said this, this is why um, they are walking in such a high level of obedience. He says, because God is working out your salvation with fear and trembling. So he said, I want you to continue to, to fully embrace God's will, I want you to embrace what God is, is inviting you into. He said, work it out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Be serious and sober about this. Verse 13, for it is God who works in you. It is God that works in you both to will and to do, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So God is at work and he's working on your will. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I find that many of us, we want the ability to express um, obedience. Yeah. But you're unwilling to surrender or relinquish your will to God. And you're just saying, why isn't this happening in my life? You talk about a supernatural lifestyle, Lynn, in faith-filled obedience, and you talk about, you know, how the, the sons and daughters of God have been given the kingdom, and, and you talk about a life of overflowing abundance and fullness, and why isn't that happening in my life? Well, number one, there's an enemy that wants to contest it, resist it. He doesn't want you stepping into the fullness of your inheritance. So we have to war. You have to stand your ground. Mm -hmm. You have to not move from the position that Christ has given you in a victorious position. But I have also met an enemy. Another enemy. And it is me. <laughs> a matter of fact, more than the devil, my biggest enemy is me. Sometimes I think it's her, but it's not. <laughs> it's me. I am my biggest enemy. And so I read these great and precious promises and I go, I'm in, I'm in for kingdom life. I'm in for ascension life. God, I want to apprehend you the way you've laid hold of me. I want a life in overflowing fullness. I feel like my biggest struggles, and I felt that this morning. I know that you noticed that when I handed you your phone back while we were talking. My biggest struggle with that it, it is is with me I feel this anger or frustration and it's usually because my will is wanting to exert itself against love what love looks like what serving what giving and 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 you know living this God kind of life when I when I have this struggle with it it doesn't look very pretty <laughs> <laughs> and I get convicted pretty quick, I think. <laughs> and you know, folks, I, I want you to know that we're called daily to take up our crosses and follow Jesus. Because a part of ascension life is following in his footsteps. And we've talked about the cycle of the cross, death, burial, mm -hmm. resurrection, then ascension and exaltation. Mm -hmm. And then we repeat it over and over again. But some people's crosses on a daily basis are bigger than others. <laughs> and guess what? Many times on a daily basis, I am a big cross that she has to bear. And so in our marriage, uh, she goes, Jesus, I don't know if I can bear this cross anymore. But there she is uh, yielding her will and saying, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And when she said yes to me, she was saying yes to God's will for her life. Uh, I heard somebody say, well, if 
if this spouse or this person that you've chose to marry was not God's will before you said, I do, they are now. They are now. And so when she said yes, <laughs> she was it. saying, Father, Lynn is, my, is your will. <laughs> and he said, you said yes. <laughs> and so I've been a, a big cross oh, in, no. in her life. We've been a joy. And I think we've talked about how um, we both. Are... Well, a crucified Lynn is, is a joy. <laughs> <laughs> how we both changed and um that we're we're better together that we've grown as we've grown together and as we've yielded our lives to the lord we have caused each other to grow in maturity in god um into places that we that we i mean we could have chose we yeah. could have chosen an easier path yeah. or easier relationship and what not we been thought pushed. would have been an easier path yeah. yeah but god has used this and and i feel i definitely feel it i am a a more fully um fully fully hearted lover of god because i've had i've been joined to this man in covenant who has pushed me when i needed to be pushed even when i was fighting being pushed out of the boat to try new things or to to grow in in prayer or to grow in teaching or to grow in in sharing the word and and because i've had to step out and do that um it has grown my relationship with the lord because i found out that god is faithful i found out that i can trust him i find i found out that when i'm weak he's strong and i think we've we've done that yes. together. yeah faith is a is a glorious thing but it can also be messy yeah. in the process of us walking it out as we try to hear the voice of the Lord and walk walk uh, in His will for our life, as we hear the voice of the Shepherd. Mm -hmm. now, now, can I make another comment? It's, I don't I don't want to co-opt your thing, but I've been this comment no, this keeps coming good. back. The different things you've said. <laughs> you just don't want to talk about our marriage anymore. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, but you keep saying something about the God kind of life, and um, I have to confess there are times and. Maybe that's just shifting now, even where I've thought about when we have the power to live this life, that it's just this powerful life that he makes available so that we can live his life. But I kind of disconnected that. It was like receiving something that was really powerful so that you have it. And then you take it and run and do your thing with it versus this this concurrent um his life now, experience, experiencing his now life, the life like being in communion with Jesus right now, where he is as he's living his life now that I'm in fellowship and as he's leading his life now, he's leading my life as he is doing his activity in heaven, in the kingdom of God and that my interaction with him is this life it's not just i took i took it from him and separated from him and now i'm just using his powerful life to do my thing yes or to do what i think is his thing but kind of separated from him but it's this interacting i just was thinking about that and it kept coming i kept hearing you say god's god's life and god's kind of life and that's what and i'm Carmen, we're running out of time but that is a great truth focus and point because right now jesus the servant mm-hmm even though he's a son, he's an heir. Yeah. He hasn't lost his heart to do the will of his father. Matter of fact, right now, he's ruling and reigning so that the father will receive the inheritance of a family that he longed to have. And so right now, Jesus is living in us so that his desire to please his father mm -hmm. and to love his father, to present to him an inheritance of, of a family of affection that would love him the way he should be loved. Jesus is at work right now to make sure that the father gets what he yeah. has longed for. That's why he was willing to come because yeah. it was all about love. We're being, we're, we're being drawn in uh, to their relationship and this what I call this divine cycle of love and glory we're being drawn into it so you're absolutely right 
when he works within us this this will to to want to yield up and give up our will and what we want to do the will of the father then it leads to a god-sized life that we don't just take it and run with it to do what we want to with it no he's he's bringing us to a point of sweet surrender that we embrace the will of the Father, that we understand what the Father longs for, what Jesus longs for, what the Holy Spirit longs for. And then that will, once I align myself to it, then that reality is able to be worked in and through and out of me. That's good. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Yes, thank you for joining us for the Age Changer Show. If you could please like this video and share it, and we'll get the word out more um, for those who are hungry and those who are seeking to hear these words of life and let this resound and um, echo back out of people's hearts. But you can be a, a, um, a person who helps do that, a bridge to the people that who know you can hear this word. Um, if you'd like more information about Summit Life Ministries, you can go to summitlifeministries.com. We appreciate your prayer. We appreciate your interacting with us. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love for you to put those um, also on our website or on um, our podcast on the Facebook page. And we would like to respond to those. God bless you.